cheating video and today we're going to talk all about brushes. That's right. Um, specifically I want to talk about sort of the the five key brushes you should have and when to use them. Um, so I did a video previously on brush selection, use and care and all that and, and that video is still very much dead on but I, I kind of want to talk about how I think about um, brushes today and what brushes I look to have and, and so on and so forth. And in my mind <clears throat> there's really sort of five brushes you need, five types of brushes you should have in your collection, okay? Um, I have a lot more than that. We all tend to collect these things. It's fun. They're a tool like anything else. Uh, I'm obsessed with a bunch of this crap, so it's just what happens. But uh, I just want to talk through those five brushes, what they are, what they, why they're essential, and where you would apply them. Um, so, here we go. Let's start out with the fur with the five. Here you go. These are my five. Okay? These are sort of my five essentials. And I'll kind of talk through what they are. So, over here we have my workhorse. This is a size eight uh, artist brush, as you can see. Oh, very high quality. Um, I have a bunch of these. Here's three more of them. They're all the same size. They're all the same thing. Um, these are a very cheap brush that come out of a big multi-pack of brushes that you can get like 50 brushes for $10. Um, I like these. I don't know, they're just, they happen to be the right snap for my tastes. They hold together well enough. They have a basic point. This is what I do most of my base work with. So when I'm like, as I'm starting out, as I'm laying down color, if I'm doing initial settings, this is most of what I'm doing. Uh, as an example, this is a guy I painted uh, recently in a class with, um, well, recently depending on when you're watching this, I suppose, um, with Sergio Calvo, the class he taught. And this guy is base coated, like all the base colors that were put on here was done with this brush, okay? So like, a very large amount of the coloration you see on here is derived from this massive brush. Now, obviously he has a lot more detail work than that, right? And so that leads us to the next two brushes. So next up, you wanna have a couple brushes that are high quality, like sable brushes. In this case, these are Raphael 8404s. Um, you can also use like Windsor and Newton versions of this. So this is just a size one in Windsor and Newton series seven. Um, you wanna have basically like, you can you can have any number of these you want. I always keep a couple extras around. I, I do like, you know, nice brushes, but here I have a size two and a double lot. You'll see it either as two slash zero or as Windsor and Newton says that they actually do, you know, two zeros. Um, the first and most important thing to understand about brush sizes is that they're a lie. They're made up. There's no there's no standardized size for them. Um, it's just kind of a relativity to each other thing. So one lines two could be another lines one or three, like they're close-ish. They can often vary greatly in length and all that sort of thing. Um, I like to have, the, these two are really my go-to. And that's because both of them, when we get them wet, and kind of smooth them out will hold a pretty razor sharp point, okay? And that's what I use them for. These are detail work brushes. This is sort of my standard detail work where I need to be very careful. This is my extreme detail detail work. So to return back to our guy here, for things like the edge highlighting um, and for things like catching his lip or doing little, you know, sorry, catching his lip or or doing like these little lines in the hair. All of that was basically this size two. And then when I need to do like his eyes or little micro texture in the, uh, you know, in the tabard here, uh, that kind of stuff, or pick out little individual elements of this highly detailed thing or do little scratches and texture here on the, the bracers, that was all, as well as his eyeballs, his very, very small, for this size model, 
he has the teeniest, tiniest little baby eyeballs. Um, that was the size double eye. So this gets very little use. And and the key with these is they're they're sable and they're fragile, right? I mean, they'll hold up as long as you clean them regularly. You can make a good one of these brushes last for years. Um, but they are fragile. Like, they're made of real hair. And if you get crazy, if you fill them with inks, if you let stuff get down in the ferrule, if you start pushing them around on the miniature, like doing stippling or dry brushing type stuff, or you use very thick paint, you can destroy these. Um, if these touch metal pigment, I never use this kind of brush with metal because that's just asking for them to be destroyed. Metal pigment, like true metallic metal paint is made of metal pigment and it will absolutely, um, it will shred real hair because it's tiny pieces of razor um, that you're putting through a real hair. So it will cut it up. But these two are essential because they're what takes you from sort of the, your base into a higher level. So like when I needed to do the veins, like I said, when I needed to, to edge these things and add scratches, when I needed to add little uh, edges to the sword and light dots and stuff like that when I wanted to get these rivets, whatever. That's where these things come in, right? When I'm not handling big exposed sections, when I wanted to get these little color transitions in the, um, in the armor plates, right? So that's those two. Next up, this thing. I don't know what this thing is. I found this a long time ago and it's obviously some kind of junk brush. I have no idea where I got it from, but the point is you need a real junky brush, okay? It can be anything. It can be an old brush that's nice that you beat to, to heck and back and is dead. It can be anything like that. But you need a real junky brush. And your junky brush is for doing things that you don't want to otherwise get stuff in. It's good to have a couple of these. So it's good to keep your old junky brushes around. Like when one of your nice brushes wears out its welcome, keep it around and turn it into a junk brush. It's like a t-shirt becoming a rag to wipe down your car, right? Um, <clears throat> this I use for washes and heavy applications of um, ink. And if I need to like mix up a, a PVA glue water mixture, I'll use like a brush like this. I have a couple of these old junky brush. I literally have no idea where this came from. The base is like, or the handle is like some kind of really junk plastic thing. Um, but it works, and you can see all these stains of all the washes I've shoved this thing down in over the years, right? Um, but it's good to have a, a just a, a couple junk brushes like this. And like I said, they can be your, you know, the, 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 the soldiers who've served proudly and now moved into retirement, as it were. Um, but you want some of these around because the last thing you want to do is put even your workhorse brush and stuff like that into things like glue or wash that's just going to really get it ruined fast. Brush number five. Brush number five is a good dry brush. Um, this is a makeup brush. I bought it as part of a big package. Um, and I like makeup brushes. Specifically, you want uh, makeup brushes that are made for... Uh, eyes uh, for eye shadow and contouring and stuff like that because that's meant to work it's very soft obviously you're not gonna have this very hard bristled brush that then is used around your eyes which are obviously very sensitive to being stabbed uh, so something like that or something with contours uh, or made for contouring sorry um, is is really your your primary brush these are incredibly soft uh, they they just have this really light touch. Some of them have rounded tips. Some of them have flat tips. Some of them have angled angled tips. It doesn't really matter that much as long as they're nice and soft. They'll do the job because you're going to be barely touching the surface anyways. You know you're just going to be like lightly, kind of, massaging it. Uh, after you you want to use you know get the paint worked in and then make sure you get get the paint worked into the bristles and then make sure you get this cleaned out. Uh, you always want to make sure your dry brushes do get cleaned out. It can be difficult, um, but you can actually work the rest of the paint out. Like I, I wear an apron, as many people know, right? So, and what I'll often do is right after I dry brush, before I go in the water, I'll just like do this on my apron on the cloth to get the rest of the, the paint out. And then I go push it in water and do the same thing again. If you're not wearing an apron, you can just use a paper towel and do the same thing. Um, so... Those are your five brushes, right? And you need some version of these five in your collection. 
You can have a lot more than that. You can have things you're using for other purposes. Like I keep a dedicated brush here that's one of the, you know, the old versions of my Windsor Newton that just died and lost its tip. But it's big, like this was a size two. I keep this around to do pigment with because the bristles are nice and soft and I can just, uh, and I can go ahead and dip it in the pigment and put on stuff. But I don't mix this one with the washes because I want this brush to be very dried out. I don't. I want it to be able to separate easily and things that have washes get into them because the washes will and inks will inevitably get down on the ferrule become very, you see how that like doesn't bend all the way down, right? Because this part is basically solid now. There's like a solid chunk of dyed medium and paint pigment in there. Whereas this one, because it only ever touches just raw dry pigment, you notice it's still bends all the way and so it comes apart really easy and that lets me then I, it doesn't ever get wet that's the key I use this literally as a dry brush <laughs> but like for dry pigment not like I would use this thing so you can have other brushes like that but it's not essential you could always you know you could always use your junkie brush for for doing pigment and stuff like that it's not not a big deal but some version of those five is effectively how you want to you want to think about this so like if I looked at this model and then applied the five, this guy is all my initial sort of base coating and coloration, could be glazes, could be wet blends, could be whatever it is to establish all my my scheme and my initial colors. The number two is my first layer of detail where I'm coming in and I'm getting like the lips, the ears, the hair light lines, these little ropes on his chest, right? Um, the basic colors of maybe the sword or the edges or these small details in here on the, the pommel, the hilt of the sword. Um, maybe setting down some of the initial blends here and here, right, on the these kinds of layers here in the, in the uh, legs and doing the edges and stuff like that. Maybe doing some of the initial edge work here. Then I move to this guy for the final refinement. So this is doing the nice, sharp, thin lines. This is, if I was doing freehand, I would be starting with this brush with the freehand and then refining it with the very thin brush, that kind of thing. Um, this is where I'm doing all my tight edges, uh, finishing this off, creating light dots, creating all my micro texture and scratches, right? If I were uh, putting this guy into a base, besides this, random three pieces of stone he's standing on. The dry brush would obviously be used in texturing the base and stuff like that, as well as this guy to do any washes on the base. So even in a, like a, you know, theoretically high-end miniature, I'm using all of this stuff to complete the total piece. So there you go. That's just some thoughts on sort of the five brushes you should have in your collection and why and how to apply them. Now, again, nothing about the brand here I've said matters in case it's not abundantly clear from the fact that the three of these are generic brushes I can't even identify anymore. Um, like generic pack of brushes, generic pack of makeup brushes. I do not know, something I found in the woods, right? These two are nice. There's there there are plenty of brands out there. Windsor and Newton makes nice ones. Scarf, Raphael, Da Vinci. You know, every one of them is slightly different. Every one of them has a slightly different spring, a slightly different uh, belly length, and you know, find you get a couple of them over time and find the ones you like is my best advice. Um, I happen to like the Raph 8404s. I've been a fan of Windsor and Newton for a long time, but these have been winning me over recently. You know, I I still use both of them pretty regularly. So. There you go. There's the five brushes everyone should have in their collection and how to use them. I hope that was uh, helpful. If you liked that, give it a like. Uh, if you'd like to see uh, more, you can always subscribe. We have new videos here every Saturday. Uh, the If you have any suggestions for future hobby cheating videos or a comment or a question, feel free to drop that down below. Always like to see that. If you'd like to come learn with me, I teach all over the US and UK along with CK Studios and you can find the link to that down in the description. But as always, I very much appreciate you watching this one. And